is Unique from That's Enough, Hot 97, DJ Enough, and I'm here with DC native, Chaz French. Yo, 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 and I'm Chaz French. Is that something to <laughs> 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 I put everything in my music, so if I'm going through it, it's all I can rap about. That's all I can make. That's, you know, a lot of people relate to my story because I was uh, homeless at one point by choice. It wasn't like my parents was broke or anything, but I was, you know, trying to chase a dream and I felt like nobody supported me so I you know I feel like I, if I take it the hard way and learn from you know mistakes then everything else would play out the way it did so you know I just got here by keeping it true and surrounding myself with the right people that really cared about what I was doing and had to say yeah. so homeless by choice you're yeah. being stubborn yeah <laughs> yes I'm a stubborn guy like I was so you know, my, I dropped out of school or whatever, and um, not so much, like when I dropped out, I ended up entering like this program to where you could still get your diploma and shit. Uh -huh. So, you know, I didn't even, I didn't get my diploma though, but you know, uh, so after that whole situation went, like my parents were just, man, get a job, do this, do this, do this, do this, do that. And I was just like, man, I wanna do music. And I feel like, you know, now that I'm a parent, I get, they what they were trying they just wanted the best for me yeah. at the end of the day but i didn't see that because i like you said i was stubborn and i just was caught up in what i wanted to do so you know i at first i lived with a homeboy and i got put out of there and then after that i was just thugging it like so how old it. were you when you dropped out and you became homeless on purpose well i dropped out crazy i dropped out senior year okay. i just stopped going to school yeah just stopped going to school i, I mean it, it was pointless now that I'm older, like it was, it made no sense, but then it did. And I just, you know, I knew that I wasn't gonna use half the shit that I was learning mm -hmm. in high school to do what I wanted to do. And that's just how I felt at the time. That was just me being ignorant. And at the time you already knew you wanted to be a musician. Yes, I've been rapping like since I was like eight, so seven or eight. At one point, didn't you want to be an aspiring baseball player? Well, baseball how player. How do you know that? Yeah. It's online, like you gotta do That's research. random. I didn't know anyone knew that. Yeah, baseball was my thing, like literally, like I really wanted to play baseball. For what team? Um now the Nationals, I would probably play. But before play. that the Orioles? No, I wanted to play for the Mets. Okay. Yeah. That was uh because that was the team I played for in coach pitch and like t-ball and like so i was like man i want to play for the mets because that i just that's all i knew like and i didn't I, and it's crazy because i never even watched baseball mm -hmm. like my mom was like hey your cousin plays baseball you should you should play baseball and i was like let's do it <laughs> and i actually was like really good at it so that's funny because like usually a lot of people from the dmv they go into like basketball and football yeah football. and then when i see when i went to high school i was just ninth grade that's when i really was like no i'm gonna <laughs> nope, this is it. I want to be because I did like a, a talent show in ninth grade, and like everybody went crazy. So from that point, I was like, Oh yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. Like, so this is it. Do you remember that the song or the beat to the song? <laughs> the beat to the song, because I didn't have any producers back then. This is ninth grade. I did a song to the Cassidy Hotel beat. Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, called like, me really? and my friend Marcus, and it was called All I Do, and they went crazy though. But how did that go? Like, I'm not gonna rap it. Like, you don't no. have to rap it. You just can harmonize. Like, none big. of that. All I can do is like. No, it was, just, it <laughs> it was, was embarrassing. A, it was about a girl. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> and if you were at the school, then you know the song. But yeah, I oh did my to the, god, they still my, joking about that? Nah, they 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 forgot all about that. Uh, some people from the school still be like, bro, remember you did? <laughs> da, 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 da. Like, it's crazy to see where you are now after doing, you know, the So the it's freaking... been like growth since then. Yeah, Major definitely, growth. definitely. Like, like after I went through what I went through as far as like being homeless and going without, like that really made me the artist I am now. Like that, that whole situation just, I guess made me stronger for like everything that I'm going through now. Like mentally just, prepared me for the situations that I endure right now. So. And you were homeless in Texas, right? Yes. So you know a lot. <laughs> Why did you move from D.C. to Texas? Well, my mom, at the time she was married, and her husband at the time had found like a better job. And you know, the cost of living out there is cheaper, so it just made sense to them. And I didn't want to go. I was like, man, I'm not going to no Texas. fucking Texas. 
Then when I got out there, it was like the best shit ever. Like, that's my, I love Texas. Like, when I get, when it's time for me to like really settle down and move to Texas. Okay, because honestly, I thought you just up and left and went to Texas. No, 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 no. See, and then after like, I was done with school or whatever, my mom moved back to DC. And mm. she was like, you need to come back. And I was like, no, I'm gonna stay out here. And just mm. thug it. So, so then I had nowhere to go because she was back at home. I wasn't going to go with my stepdad at the time. So it was just like, I was just out here. Just out there? Yeah. So when did you finally move back home? I was dealing with a girl at the time. And like, I really respected her. And I was in love, quote unquote. <laughs> so she was like, you know, if you, you're, you're, you're fucking up. Like, mm -hmm. you need to go back home with your mom. And she was like, you know, if you really care about this relationship and if you care about your career. Because, like, during that time when I wasn't, like, I wasn't doing nothing. Like, I wasn't, I was writing raps, but I was just, I wasn't doing shit. And like, I was proving though, everybody weren't... right. Like, I, everybody who told me, like, you're doing nothing, like, they were right. <laughs> like, what are you doing with yourself? And I was like, man, I'm, I'm working. I wasn't doing shit, though. So how did you moving back home help change that? Well, I moved to, I moved back to DC for like a little bit, and then I was like, nah, because I just didn't want to depend on my mom, and I just, you know, just growing up, you trying to be a man, like what you think is a man? Like, I don't need nobody. I, I can do this shit on my own, and da 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 da. So I moved to Richmond, and I got a job, mm -hmm. and I started rapping again, and I had made this project called Happy Related. My first project. Well, I made a complete like the Happy Related that's out. Yeah, is not the one that I made when I first got home. Okay. So I had I recorded that and I was about to drop it. I was like on my own type of <laughs> shit, like having no clue what how to properly roll it out. Yeah, like just I just thought you know if I drop this shit, <laughs> it's dope. So it's going. I'm gonna get rich and motherfuckers <laughs> gonna know who I am. And, no. That shit would never be heard. But when I, long story short, somebody heard it mm -hmm. through my brother, and they took it to my ma my manager Dre now, and he was like, "This this guy is fucking dope." And you know, since ever since then, it's just been you know uphill from there. So from the original um, Happy Belated, mm -hmm. and now like, how have the themes changed? Oh, because the first Happy Belated was just. Get money, fuck bitches. <laughs> oh my God. Do drugs, turn the fuck up. Da, 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 da. Just real, you know, braggadocious. Cause that's and just, how your life was? Or? That's what I, I was just rapping about. To be honest, I was just trying to be like the shit that was out. Uh -huh. Subconsciously, I was like, oh, this is tight. So I'm going to make my version of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is dope. So I'm going to do what, what I would do. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, if I was to have a beat like that, this is what I would do to it. Or... Like, I would literally go to the studio, hey, we need to beat like da 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 We need to beat like da 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 Just me not, just being clueless of how, of how shit works. Like, I could, I could still rap, though. You know what I'm saying? I was, I always rap. But it just wasn't, to be honest, it wasn't me. So when my manager heard it, he was like, bro, like, this shit is dope. But if you were to tell everybody, if you wanted people to know who you are, and if you want to, you know, help people out like you say you do and if you want to be an inspiration to people tell your story and then from then I just been sometimes they be like bro <laughs> you need to go back to the turn up shit sometimes <laughs> oh no, 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 no. why the fuck you so positive <laughs> <laughs> but it's like shit I, I found my I found my niche and your fan base yeah like they you know so have any of your uh, fans off the first project told mm. you how like they relate to them and all day. So like my DMs is crazy. Like you help me with suicide and oh, wow. you help me with this and you help me with that and it's crazy. Is it overwhelming at times? No, it's perfect. That's what I do it for. Okay. Like the girls and the money and the tight shit, that's cool. It's just whatever. But that right there is what I do it for. So had you not changed your style I highly doubt you would have got that type of response. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They probably would have just been like, bro, we lit. Da, 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 da. I mean, I still, it's still in my music. You know, I still incorporate it in my music because that's what I do. I, I still turn up. I still have fun. I'm still a, a human. I still have a, you know, have a preference and shit like that. But 
I, you know, I just make music now to inspire the guy who doesn't want to be in school, who doesn't want to have a job, who doesn't. But then now, like from the first project, it was just so like, you could tell I was just youthful. My mindset was just different. different. And then like the transformation, then it was just like, okay, now I'm telling motherfuckers like, no, like get a job and stay in school and da 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 da. But if you really don't want to do it, don't do it. But also have a plan. See, I didn't have a plan. You just I just job. like, I'm going to make music and that's that. No rollout, no <laughs> nothing. I'm just going to fucking record. Like, that's that. So how did you think you were going to make money? I don't know. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I was just I just thought, you know, you make music and if you're good at it, then you prosper. And that's sadly that's not the case. Because if that was the case, it would be you know Way more, more artists and people. yeah, it would be like it's so many motherfuckers that I run into who just are dope as fuck, but they don't have the drive for it. They don't they don't care. They don't. They want to move forward because that's what they see, but they really not built for it. But they are talented as fuck. And sadly, I don't want to get, I don't want to have this kind Sadly, in a music industry, it's not about the music. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> well, <move> <laughs> <forward>. okay. <laughs> so, <Man. laughs> no, I, I, no, I saw that tweet you put out, like, addressing that. So, um. About, you know, I like, I hate the industry. And I do. Yeah, but you love your craft. I love my craft. I'm never going to doubt me. I'm going to stop. Mm -hmm. But this is a kissing ass fucking business. And my lips ain't built for ass. And this is my lady. <laughs> <laughs> so you also said you wanted to make a track with Lil Wayne. Who wouldn't? What would your track with Lil Wayne be about, though? I would go back to straight fucking like... Oh, like damn! I ain't no Chaz. Felt like this. Like I would go ham. And the and the mindset that Wayne is in right now, we could totally make a fuck the industry record. Mm -hmm. that's fuck it. the industry. <laughs> that's I like love. It's like a love hate thing. It's like you gotta love it because that's how you feed your family, and that's how you know that's in your mind coming up, not knowing like what it's about. You think it's like glitz and fucking glamour and it's just dog. And I'm a I'm a very like loving person and this industry it has no love in it. Uh -huh. But it's still it's so I I could talk about this shit all day and I'm not gonna do it. I was gonna say like, like why can, like from experiences like why do you feel that way? The proof is in the pudding. You gotta be in once you're in it, you'll be like, okay, I get this shit. It's not a. It's about music, but it's not about music. It's all about. It's, it's not. It's, it's not much shit that's genuine in this shit. It's about. At the end of the day, it's about what can you do for me. That's what the. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the other people. What can you do for me? And the minute that they feel like they got all, they can from me, then you. Then you're thrown to the side. Your daughter is like a really big inspiration. The best. In your life. Oh. And she just celebrated her birthday, right? You know too much. This is on Instagram. You put this all in your social media. You gotta stop doing that <laughs> shit. Like, I'm about to delete everything off my Instagram. So what was the um the baby turn up like? I think I had more fun than she did. Are you serious? What? What did y'all do? Everything that we wasn't supposed to do at a kid's party. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was turn, like, it was her, it's her third birthday. It's the, it was like the first time I was actually, I can actually put to, like in a space to where I can put together a party for my child. Mm -hmm. It was like, it wasn't forced. It was like people there that I knew. And like she lives in, she lives like three hours, two hours from me. So she doesn't really have like, I mean, she's three. She doesn't have friends at all, but you know what I'm saying? Not she even doesn't, daycare friends? I mean, she got, they, they're not, they're not going to know each other by the time they're in ninth grade. They're not friends. But anyway, <laughs> she doesn't have any anybody in DC for real mm -hmm. except me and my mom and you know my family so I invited my kids I mean my friends with kids my son was there you know just my uh whoever has kids in my families her cousins and all that it was fun and I, I rented out the uh clubhouse at my apartments 
which is actually like I'm thinking I'm gonna throw a party there next. It was, <laughs> just, it was clutch. So you had way more fun than your kids did. I don't even like to be honest. I don't even think I saw my daughter that much at her own party. Like it was just so much. It was just so much fun. And then like my mom doesn't like when I turn up. So I I think the art of sneaking and drinking is better than just openly drinking. So I was like sneaking, going to the car and drinking and stuff. And everybody, my uncles and shit was like, pass me that, pass me that, let's drink, let's drink, let's drink real quick. <laughs> so it was just like, I don't know, it was just, it was fun. She danced, all, like she probably, that's the longest she probably stayed up in a long time. Like we, we party like it was like I, my party. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, it was tight. We, we party to like one. Oh wow. And the kids stayed up till one. That's the crazy thing. The kids were dancing and, it was tight. It was fun. What time did the party start? 6.30. That's the late party for Well, they told us we couldn't start at 6.30, and we started at 5. Okay. So. You have this hashtag that you always use. Is it like, struggles, what made us? Yes. What does that mean? And like. That's just what I... I didn't know that that statement was going to be what people, like, gravitated towards. Mm -hmm. So, like, in, on my intro, on the first, on the first project, I ended it was like the struggle with made us happy related and everybody who heard the project really gravitated towards that that line so and when people was like even now when fans hit me up it's just like bro the struggle with made us bro i needed that because da, 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 da. the struggle makes you and some people me learning i'm like growing up and just being more open-minded and just paying attention and you know having a relationship with god and you know, just trying to be an overall better me, I realized that your struggles is like the most important shit in your life. If you really don't let it get the best of you. And that's hard to like, you know, it's a struggle every day. Even if you're successful, even if you're a fucking billionaire, you still have a, some type of struggle, but it, it makes you a better person at the end of the day. But it's just all in how you cope with it, all in how you deal with it. If you let it get the best of you, then it will. It will fuck your fuck your whole mind up. But if you just understand that a struggle is an everyday thing, then you had no choice but to make the best of it. You know, like I'm. People look at me now like, bro, you made it, da 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 da, da and it's just like, eh. <laughs> but I'm not gonna let it. Like all going back to even what I was saying, like I hate the industry. I'm not gonna let that shit stop me from doing what the fuck I was here to do. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what people gotta understand and, and really just accept. Like, so what? Suck it up. So what new music are you working on? Just finished my project. Boom, boom, boom. What's it called? Not telling you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, what's it about? The name of the project is called Not Telling You. Now, uh, so it's uh. I dropped Heavy Related, uh -huh. and it was grungy, it was like, fuck everybody, mm. this is me. It was like a selfish project, it was just like me, 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 me. And then These Things Take Time was like more bright, uplifting, you know, it's yeah. more singy, more like showing people like, I have another side, you know, my other side is this. So now, and I'm a Gemini, so you know, I got two sides, sides. Anyway, quote unquote, that's what they say. So it's putting Heavy Related, and these things ain't time into one. And it's it's letting people know, okay, I didn't have it. Second project, you think I have it. Third project, this is what it really is. This is what I'm going through now that you think that I am, quote unquote, that I've made it. But you have to realize, um, compared to other people on the outside, you kind of did. Yeah, but and, and that's the thing. But to me, I have it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To meet people, man, you did it, da 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 And in my mind, just me being an artist, like I like I haven't, I haven't done anything, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But that's just me being in competition with myself. That's just me challenging myself. That's just me like trying to like outdo what I already did. And sometimes that right there is not a good thing. So that's what the project is. It's just me trying to find a balance. A release date? Yeah, release date. For now, never worry, 25th. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not gonna be this year. Let's let's tell them that. Let's okay. get that out of the way. It's not gonna be 2016. But maybe 2017. Yeah. 
top five favorite spots in DC? Like food spots. Fuegos. Really? It's a strip club. No, I know what that is. I love it. It's a bullet. They know um, They have bullet wounds there. And I'm all for shooting. And you're not allowed <laughs> to bring your cell phone. You're not allowed to bring your. You're not allowed to bring your cell phone in there. Who? You're not supposed they to. They can't. I can't. You can bring. It's BYOB. Own. <laughs> I don't know. You can bring your own liquor. A strip <laughs> club where you can bring your own liquor? Oh my god. <laughs> what? All right. What else? Fuegos. Even though they probably hate me there, Rose Bar. They probably hate me at Rose Bar. You go to the day parties? No. Those are lit. They are, but I don't go there no more. I mean, I'm over the club now. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like when I first, when when Dre first introduced my manager first introduced me to like the whole scene. Cause before that, like literally before I met Dre, I had never been to a club. Really? Yeah, I had never. Cause that's not my thing. That's not what I'm into. Like I like. A, like when I go out in DC, people are like, damn, I didn't expect you to be here. Like I go to a fucking bar and just be me and my bros or my lady just we just go drink, uh -huh. you know, like whatever. I like to turn up in the house to be honest or the studio. I'm in the studio nonstop, so studio, that's where I do my turn up. Okay. So the studio, my the studio I go to uh -huh. is the third spot. Uh, what do I like to eat? I like uh. Capital Grill. Okay. It's my restaurant. They love me there. Um, it will be my fifth place that I love to go to. And I love 930 Club. Really? Love 930 Club. Both of them. U Street Music Hall. And I think 930 Club, I don't know if I should say that, is the best venue in, out there <laughs> in DC. Don't not book me because I said that because I love <laughs> everything else, but I really love 930 Club. Okay. I don't know what it is. That venue is just. It's fun. This is a fun place to be. Every time I go there, I have a good time. Yeah. Okay. I would say um, next time you go, there's a spot called Fish in the Hood. Why have I heard of that? Because it's right by HU and it's amazing. Well, I like, uh, it's another place I like to go to out there that I was, that I was like, I can't not say that. Um, Kick Spot. They got, if you're ever in DC, go to Kick Spot. They got dope ass shoes and shit. Yeah. They can get anything from there. Yeah, so plug job, let me get my discount. <laughs> my, more than what I already do. <laughs> so, um, social media handles and any last words? Chaz French Music on Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, new music coming real soon. Like, real, real, real soon. Like, sooner than you think. So, But not 2016. No, see. I said I'm not dropping the project oh. in 2016, but I got music coming Okay. in 2016. I got a lot of things coming in 2016. So the year's not over and we can do a lot in what, four months? So we're going to make the best of the rest of Three. the year. Three, four, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, and I just want everybody to know uh, if you got dreams and aspirations and you know, and I do this all the time, so this is not, you know, really like do it. Really like stick by it. Don't be scared to pray. Don't be scared to uh, trust people, even though I know it's tough. Like surround yourself with people who really care. And when I say that, I don't mean care about you. They just care about moving forward in life. And once you do that, and once you, you know, let God or your God take control, it will be good. But until then, struggle made us. Tash French.